I'm Isabella from KZSC, and today I am joined by Liam and Stefan. James. <laughs> also known as. Good morning. Yeah, thank you guys so much for talking to me today. Cool. Um, so, you guys had a pretty big year last year with the release of two albums, like a big influx of material. Um, what would you say catalyzed like that burst of production? Um, I think it's mainly because uh, the stuff that came beforehand took a bit longer than we'd like to usually take on a record. Um, so we found we were a little bit burnt out. So we stopped doing anything for a while. Like we didn't really play that many shows or make that much music. And then I think once we started up again, um, it just seemed like we were kind of ready to just like work really hard and really quickly. And that was sort of the result of that, I think. Yeah. Just changed the process a little as well. Like recorded with a band for both of those records as well. Yeah, that's really cool. I was going to ask you guys about that as well, because um, you guys had live members uh, on the album for the first time. And like, how was that experience? What kind of like inspired the transition to use more production and instrumentation? I think with the the first one, the option that was like directly inspired by like working with a live band because we'd always played with them for years. And so it was, I guess yeah. we wanted to like capture that. We talked about sound. it for a while of like making something as a live band as well. Um, yeah, just wanted to give it a shot. How was it for you, James? You, you appeared. Yeah, it was great. It was nice, you know, being a part of the recording process and just, yeah, I don't know, being on the record. It's been fun. And yeah. yeah, cool. Um, so kind of speaking about, like, genre progression, um, your guys' track, Don't Come Home Today, was sampled by ASAP Rocky. Um, how did that collaboration come about? Um, it was definitely not collaborative. <laughs> it was, um, it was like, we just randomly got like an email from oh, cool. Warner, Sony, mm. like one day and they were like, uh, this is happening. Can, can you, uh, will you let it happen? <laughs> we were like, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, if, yeah, we did nothing. We just sort of woke up and there was just like a version of it in our inbox. And that was sort of it. Like we were stoked. Yeah. Like it was a <laughs> cool random thing to happen to us. Well, we had no input whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Okay, for sure. Are you guys fans of his at all? Yeah, like for yeah. sure. Yeah. What do you think about like the kind of like new like progression of like integration of jo genres like that with like the popularization of like rap and R and B artists like sampling indie songs? Yeah, I mean, I think it works both ways. Like, I think it's just a product of like I don't know, like our age group, I guess, kind of grew up. Like, even just before Spotify and streaming and stuff, where you could just fucking download whatever the fuck you wanted. Like, you could just get a whole discography of, like, you get, like, Wu-Tang discography and then, like, a Bruce Springsteen discography or some shit. It's just, like, everyone's just got, like, access to every type of music ever made. And I think that that kind of just feeds back into just, like, breaking down the kind of barriers of genre a bit more, which is great because it means, like, that there's so much more yeah. cool music being made that wouldn't have been made without that, you know? Like, yeah. Availability is, is key. I love it. Yeah, it's a lot better than people only being inspired <laughs> yeah. by what little circle they fall into genre-wise or whatever. Otherwise, you just have the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it's so just the same shit. Yeah, I can buy Totally. Yeah, cool. Um, so you guys also played Tropicalia this uh, past year, mm -hmm. and that was, like, your first really big festival. How was that experience? Mm. It was fun. <laughs> We'd sort of, like, um, we just finished our last U.S. tour, and it was the very last show. Um and so we were used to sort of like, I don't know, like small rooms, small rooms <laughs> and small sort of taking our time, like getting to the venue, like, and just like stretching out for a while. And then this was like very funny. Just turn up and they're like, all right, get on stage now. And like, you have like five minutes and then like, like, like pushing us on stage kind of thing. And like the whole time there's someone on the side being like, <laughs> just like, all right, sorry. Definitely a bigger production. Yeah. If you yeah. guys were to throw your own festival, what would be your ideal lineup? <laughs> um, all right, there we uh, go. Fuck. I'd get like uh, Big Thief and Kanye West. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Todd Rundgren. <laughs> Todd Rundgren. <laughs> Todd Rundgren. <laughs> um, uh, I would get Kendrick Lamar along there. Yeah, get, be cool. get Kenny in there. Um, um, I don't know. Maybe like, uh, can they be dead? Dead people? <laughs> sure, this can be a fantasy oh, yeah. festival. <laughs> yeah. I would get like Holly, like hologram, hologram, Buddy Holly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy buddy, holy buddy, holy buddy, holy buddy, holy buddy, hologram. Buddy, hologram. Yeah. Buddy, hologram. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Super cool. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask about who does the art for like your single covers, like the whole series of singles that you guys put out in 2018. I really like the album covers for that. And I was wondering, like, 
what was the inspiration behind that? <laughs> uh, what was the single? Cover? I'm trying to think. Um, there was. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's like the one of us sitting yeah. on the floor. It's like the collage kind of like aesthetic to it. Oh uh, yeah, and then there's the yeah. steps. I think I did. The oh, singles cool. covers. Yeah, Can some of I think it's mixed. Like some of them. Yeah. We usually just take it in turns to like. Oh, yeah, we just cool. sort of separate yeah. that. How do you guys think like image and music like that affects the listener or like prefaces the album? It's a little bit harder now with like, that's maybe like one of the downsides of like Spotify kind of stuff is that you don't get the tangible art experience. Yeah. yeah. But that said, if something's cool, like it'll cut through and you yeah. like still want to look at it and it forms like a connection to music, I think. I don't know. It's hard. Yeah. I always like checking out record art. Like, yeah, yeah I think like that's probably considering yeah that's like my main inspiration for like buying physical records i suppose these days is more so for the art cause yeah like definitely yeah do you guys think the same thing about like music videos yeah for sure i mean i watch a lot of music videos we hadn't made any for ages <laughs> until um, you guys have like that fan made one on youtube that's like really oh like yeah. sexual i know yeah it's like <laughs> honestly like Which you know that, that? wandy <laughs> one there's like this video of a wandy <laughs> that's like <laughs> really? people like it doesn't say it doesn't say like a visual video but it's like we never made a video for that song and so it's just oh. kind of like taken up what the mantle what of happens? like the video for that song it's like all this archive it's no it's like footage from some like some like french season. film yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's just yeah. not, not yeah, official. One which was kind of sexual as well. <laughs> For Wandu. Uh, like on the street. And oh, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. yeah, but no, yeah. this one's like more like like a bunch of sort of like teenagers just like riding bikes and shit and being like... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That's absolutely like, what it is. Yeah, a lot of like longing. In, like, it's kind of like Call Me By Your Name vibes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, it's weird. Yeah, no, that's like, I guess it's nice that people decide to make videos <laughs> for us because we usually can't be bothered. But um, yeah, that's strange. I kind of, yeah, I might. Yeah, it's too late now, but I would have got, I would, in, in future, it would be nice if people would be like, fan video. <laughs> so yeah. like, uh, True, you should message that guy and be yeah, like, hello. Be so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, good morning. Do you guys have a morning routine? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it sort of changes. Yeah, yeah, on tour, it's tour. our tour manager wakes us up. Um, and, well, I mean, this morning we missed the morning because we had, like, we horrific jet lag. Um, so, yeah, we slept, like, 14 hours or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, that's yeah. tour life, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You guys have a really big tour coming up, too. What are you most excited for about that? Uh, we're going to Mexico tomorrow. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. I'm really excited to yeah. go to Mexico. We're there for, like, a week. And then we have a show there next Friday, I think. Yeah, we just have, like, a week off in Mexico City. Yeah. So it's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 Do you guys have a country that you would want to tour in in the future that you haven't gotten to yet? I would love to, like, go into, like, South America more. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, just make our way through yeah. that. It's a bit hard because, like, it's a bit more, um, yeah, we don't really know anyone there. Like, I guess it's easier in, like, English language countries, mm -hmm. well, predominantly English language countries, to be able to, like, book a tour. But, like, yeah, it's sort of harder to, like, send emails and, like, know who to talk to and shit. But, yeah. It would be great to do that in the future. Hmm. Access it somehow. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and I have a final question for you. Um, this is for KZC Santa Cruz, the radio station mm. out of Monterey Bay. If you guys were radio DJs, what would your DJ names be? Whoa. Ooh, <laughs> shit. It's very yeah. difficult coming up with a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, wait, what's yours? I really dislike mine. I did not mention it at the beginning <laughs> of this interview, <laughs> but I'm, I'm DJ Melancholy. I don't know. It's kind of... <laughs> Thank you. I had a I had a shoegaze show, so I wanted to have something kind of like <laughs> moody like, and like. Does everyone have to have their own DJ name, like when they. I guess you technically show. don't have to have a DJ name. Some people just have like their regular names and be like, oh, I'm DJ insert like regular name. name yeah, yeah. So what kind of show would you guys have if you can't think of a DJ name? I mean, mine would just be just like a mixed bag or shit. That's such yeah. a cup out. But like, it would just be like yeah. Eclectic mix. Yeah. Eclectic mix. Yeah. I would be DJ eclectic mix. <laughs> <laughs> Really <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, let's lock that in for sure. Yeah. In fact, I will be in to do my guest spot uh, <laughs> next week. Yeah, what do you? Um, I suppose mine would also be a bit of an eclectic mix, but DJ eclectic mix is already no, taken. No, sorry, yeah, so that's mine. Yeah. Um, DJ customs border. <laughs> DJ Stodgenblower. Yeah. DJ Stodgenblower. Yeah. DJ Stodgenblower. Okay, cool. Well. 
I'm DJ Melancholy. This is uh, <laughs> DJ Studge and Blow. This is <laughs> DJ Eclectic Mix. Thank you so much for ta for joining with me today and talking with me. I hope you guys have a really good show. I'm excited to see it later. Thanks. I caught your um, your soundtrack and it was really good. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Nice, All right. <laughs> I don't know how to end, but like. End. <laughs>